eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, before I came to the league, I didn't know where my next move would come from. You know, my mom was selling stuff in the street. You, like, and now I'm here sitting at the top of the top, you know, and, I, and, and I'm extremely blessed. And that's why I, cannot, I can never get, I'm extremely blessed. If I, if I never have a chance to sit on this table ever again, I'm fine with it. You know, I'm, I'm fine with it. But like, I hope this can give everybody around the world hope and allow them to believe in their dreams. Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks are the 2021 NBA champions. Giannis' story to an NBA championship and a finals MVP is one of inspiration for kids across the world that aspire to become their dreams. This video will focus on the incredible journey Giannis has had to get his first NBA championship. Giannis' parents immigrated from the country of Nigeria to Greece, living in the city of Athens, where Giannis was born on December 6, 1994. He lived in a neighborhood of Sepolia in Athens. Due to Greece's laws on citizenship, Giannis was born stateless with no country to claim. His parents, due to their immigrant status, found it hard to get a job that provided well for their family. This led the Antetokounmpo brothers to sell handbags, watches, and sunglasses on the street to help provide for their family. The early life of the Antetokounmpo brothers was that of poverty and hardships, with their xenophobic surroundings causing them to feel isolated from the Greek society as separate with their stateless status. But these brothers didn't give up, always working hard to help provide for their family. On the Woj podcast, Giannis discusses watching the Greek national team battle the United States in the 2006 FIBA World Championship. They watched 610 Greek international Sophos Nikolas Shortsanatis, a black man of Cameroonian nationality, defeat the United States 101 to 95 in a hard-fought game. The importance of Sophocles helped those from immigrant parents and gave kids hope. It led Giannis to believe that he could become a professional athlete and be someone great. Giannis wanted to be a soccer superstar, but in 2007, he found the game of basketball. A local basketball coach named Spiros Villanitiatis found Giannis and influenced him to play basketball. This game would give Giannis a new life, a promise of a better future for himself and his family. Eventually, Giannis got his chance. In 2011, Giannis played for the semi-pro club of Philanthikos in the Greek B Basketball League. When playing in this league, he gained notoriety from NBA scouts and GMs for his noticeable ability on the basketball court. They liked what they saw and needed to see more of Giannis. In 2012-2013, Giannis played in the Greek A2 Basketball League, where he averaged 9.5 points per game, 5 rebounds, and 1.4 assists a game. During his time in this professional Greek league, there would be NBA scouts in the crowd watching him play because he was such an unusual player. It intrigued them. Giannis would do interviews all day with these NBA teams, asking him questions about what he would do with his first contract or whether he liked vanilla or chocolate ice cream. They tried to figure out who he was. It became clear that Giannis was a family man and would do anything to help his family prosper. In 2013, Giannis declared for the NBA draft and gained his Greek citizenship, allowing him to travel to New York to be there live in the NBA's draft room. Giannis Antetokounmpo is now in the Barclays Center, stands with his family waiting to hear his name be called. We finally arrive at the 15th overall pick where the Milwaukee Bucks are on the clock. With the 15th pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Giannis Adetokounmpo from Athens, Greece. Giannis was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks at the 15th overall selection, where he raised his Greek flag walking towards the stage to shake David Stern's hand. Giannis was a prospect that was relatively unknown by the NBA world, which was unfortunate for them because he was here to put the league on blast. Giannis came into the NBA at 6'11", weighing 217 pounds, so he was very tall but also not very strong compared to the grown men he would be facing. Now looking at Giannis' rookie season where we saw him average 6.8 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, and 1.9 assists a game. He was a tall, lanky young kid that was living in America for the first time and playing against the best basketball players in the world. This season was one of growth for Giannis, with him having to adjust to the new environment that he is in, but even in that growth, he showed flashes of the greatness that he could become. These flashes of greatness offensively and defensively got him an invitation to the Rising Stars event at All-Star Weekend where he had 9 points, 2 assists, and 2 rebounds in 17 minutes, which was a solid performance for the young rookie. When the season ended, Giannis was awarded the second team All-Rookie. This ended off a solid year for the rookie who looked to improve massively for the next few years. Giannis' second season in the league saw him almost doubling all of his numbers from his rookie season. He averaged 12.7 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, and 2.6 assists a game. It was clear he improved because he was doing all this on 49% from the field. Giannis was starting to gain serious attention for his performances like his performance versus Houston that season where he had 27 points, 15 rebounds, and 4 assists. Although the team lost the game, it was clear the Greek freak had superstar potential. 
His third season in the league saw this positive trajectory again, where he averaged 17 points per game, 7.7 .7 rebounds, and 4.4 assists per game in 35 minutes and 50% from the field. Giannis was on the verge of stardom and was about to break through to greatness. This was seen by the Bucks front office, and they extended Giannis, giving him a four-year, $100 million deal. It was a huge moment for Giannis and his family, allowing him to support them even more than he had done before on his rookie contract. All Giannis needed to do was put in the hard work, and that's exactly what he did going into the 2016-2017 season. Giannis broke through to superstardom for the Bucks and made his first all-star appearance where he averaged 22 points per game, 8.8 .8 rebounds, and 5.4 assists. This huge step into stardom gave Giannis the most improved player award. Giannis turned a losing franchise into regular season success in the East. He led the Bucks to a 42-40 record, giving them the sixth seed in the East. The Bucks ended up facing the Toronto Raptors in the first round, Giannis' first playoff berth, and he did not disappoint. The series saw him averaging 24 points per game and 9 rebounds a game. This series ended up not going in the Bucks' favor, losing in 6, but they had the young talent to compete for the future. Before Giannis could go into his fifth season in the NBA, a tragedy struck his family. Giannis' father, Charles Antetokounmpo, passed away of a heart attack in September 2017. Giannis's father was his inspiration and was someone that he wanted to follow in the footsteps of in his childhood. His father meant a lot to him, and on the opening night, Giannis dedicated his first game of the season to his father. Giannis dropped a career-high 44 points and had the game-winning dunk plus the game-saving block. It was a legendary game for opening night and was the start of Giannis' ascension to superstardom that season. Giannis' fifth season in the NBA saw him achieving new heights where he became an all-star starter for the first time in his career. Although his individual success was continuing, the team's success was not. The front office was not happy with their head coach Jason Kidd and ended up firing him mid-season with a record of 23-22. They finished the season 44-38 for the seventh seed in the East under their temporary head coach Joe Prunty. He finished the season averaging 26 points per game, 10 rebounds, and 4.8 assists while shooting 52% from the field. The Giannis-led Bucks faced the second-seeded Boston Celtics in the first round of the playoffs. This series was a battle that saw the Bucks losing in seven to the Celtics, inches away from making the second round for the first time in his career. It was clear the Bucks had the talent and the superstar to lead them. They just needed the coach to help them get to that elite level. In the offseason of Giannis' sixth year in the league, the Bucks went on and hired Mike Budenholzer, an elite regular season coach that had huge success with the Atlanta Hawks before being hired for this job. It was starting to look up for Giannis and the Bucks who were hoping to compete for a championship behind their superstar and these changes worked amazingly. The Bucks finished the season 60 and 22 for the first seed in the East with Giannis leading the charge averaging a whopping 27 points per game, 12 rebounds and 6 assists. These numbers led him to his third All-Star appearance, first team All-NBA honors and the MVP award. 2019 Kia NBA most valuable valuable player goes to Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis had won his first MVP, showing the league that he is here to dominate and win right now. The Bucks are the first seed and face the Detroit Pistons in the first round and sweep them easily, moving them onwards to the second round. In the second round, they faced the Boston Celtics, the team that they had just lost to in the last season in a heartbreaking fashion. But this year was different. The Bucks handled them with 4-1 in the series, with Giannis leading the way, averaging 28 points a game and 11 rebounds. They made it to the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time in Giannis' career, where they ended up facing the Toronto Raptors led by Kawhi Leonard. The Bucks start off hot, going up 2-0 in the series, looking to make their first Finals appearance in around 40 years. But unfortunately for them, the Raptors had other plans. Game 3 happens and the Bucks lose by 6 with a final score of 112-118, but the Raptors had figured out how to stop Giannis, as he only scored 12 points on 30% from the field. This sparked the Raptors to win three straight after game three and win the series in six, sending the Bucks home in heartbreaking fashion. That offseason, the world called Giannis a choke artist, someone who couldn't get it done when it mattered most. Basing it off the series versus the Raptors, where offensively, he was stopped. His first trip to the Eastern Conference Finals ended in failure, but Giannis wasn't here to quit. All he did was work harder for the very next year to get revenge on the league. In Giannis' seventh season in the NBA, he led the Bucks to the first seed in the East with a 56-17 record where he averaged 29 points per game, 13 rebounds, and 5 assists. Giannis was on pace for his second league MVP in the Defensive Player of the Year honors, while leading the Bucks to the best team in the world, but the season was put on pause, as well as the whole world, due to a certain virus. When the NBA resumed, they were now in a bubble in Florida, meaning there were no home games or road games, just basketball for these players. Going into the playoffs, it was an environment that no player had ever experienced before, with no fans anywhere in sight. The Bucks' first round matchup, they ended up facing the Orlando Magic, in which they finished in five games, only dropping one to Nikola Vucevic's heroic 
Celtics with a 35 point game. Moving on to the next series, the Bucks were up against the heavy underdog Miami Heat led by Jimmy Butler and the breakout rookie Tyler Hero. This series did not go well for the Bucks, especially for Giannis as free throws became his worst nightmare. The Bucks lost this series in 5 to Miami who dominated them in all facets of the game. Giannis averaged 21 points a game, 11 rebounds and 5 assists while shooting 50% for the free throw line. This was a huge drop off from his regular season production and it seemed like Giannis had run into a brick wall that he couldn't get through. There were claims that he couldn't be a number one option on a championship team and his style of basketball could never win a championship. Going into the offseason of his 8th year in the NBA, Giannis only had 1 year left on his contract and there was a time for him to either extend his deal or push for a trade out of Milwaukee. But instead, Giannis decided to sign an extension with Milwaukee despite all the doubts about him winning with this team. Giannis signed a $200 million contract extension that locked him up for the upcoming future, meaning it was dedicated to the Bucks. The Bucks also decided to get more help for Giannis by trading for Drew Holiday, a stud defensive point guard that would be replacing Eric Bledsoe and help them get over the line. As the regular season finished, the Bucks were the third seed in the East with a record of 46 and 26. Giannis averaged 28 points a game, 11 rebounds and six assists per game on 56% from the field and 68% from the free throw line. These were MVP numbers that we've seen from Giannis over the past three seasons, but everyone was focused on the playoffs and the question was whether he could get it done. The first round approaches the Bucks face off against the Miami Heat the team that thwarted their title run the season before. The media doubted the Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis, but this time around, things were going to be different. Game one of the first round, Giannis and the Bucks are in the grueling matchup with the Heat. The score is 97 and 98. Giannis gets the defensive rebound and runs up the court where he's fouled by Jimmy Butler with nine seconds left on the clock. Giannis hits the first free throw and misses the second. That's where tragedy struck for the Milwaukee Bucks. Jimmy Butler made a clutch lay-in over Giannis to send them into overtime. It seemed like last year was just going to repeat itself and Giannis would never get his shot at a title with the Milwaukee Bucks. We have a tied game in overtime with a score of 107 to 107 and Chris Middleton has the ball. Well, you know the rest. Into its feet. Middleton, five seconds left in overtime. Middleton with two. Middleton, you bet! With an incredible shot, the Bucks win game one and carry that momentum throughout the series, sweeping the heat and defeating their boogeymen. The second round is the biggest test for the Milwaukee Bucks as they faced Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden the Nets' big three-headed monster. The Bucks needed to show up and show out if they wanted to hang with the star power of the Brooklyn Nets. This series started with a quick 2-0 lead for Brooklyn as they dominated at home versus the Bucks. Something needed to change quickly for the Bucks or else they were going to be sent home by the monster Nets. We skipped to game three and unfortunately Kyrie Irving goes down with an ankle injury when falling on Giannis's foot. This injury, unluckily for the Nets, switched the momentum of the series towards the Bucks as they capitalized off the no Kyrie, no Harden Nets. They capitalized by winning a really tight game with a final score of 86 to 83 with big performances from the superstar and his second option, Chris Middleton. Ended the game with 35 points and 15 rebounds, finally giving Giannis the help he needed offensively to compete with this Nets team. The Bucks stormed back to make it a 2-2 series going into Brooklyn for Game 5. Game 5 results in one of the greatest playoff performances we've ever seen from a player, and that was from Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant dropped 49 points, 17 rebounds to 10 assists, shooting 69% from the field and 44% from three. It was an elite performance that outweighed Giannis's 34 and 12, leading the Nets to a 3-2 series lead, forcing the Bucks on the brink of elimination. Unfortunately for the Nets, Giannis and the Bucks didn't want to go home so soon. Game six happens and the Bucks blow the Nets out with a huge performance from Chris Middleton and Giannis, dropping over 30 plus each to dominate the Nets. Now it all lies on game seven in Barclays Center. We enter the first quarter, Giannis comes out blazing, finishing the quarter with 10 points. Although the Bucks were down by three, it was clear Giannis was on another level that night. Going into half time the scoreline is 53 to 47. Giannis had 15 points and it's clear he needs to explode to give his team the lead. The third quarter starts and Giannis dominates dropping 16 points on 60% from the field. The Bucks scored 35 in the third quarter off the back of a dominant quarter from Giannis taking the lead away from Kevin Durant and the Nets. It all comes down to the fourth quarter. Who will be moving onward out of these two juggernaut teams? The score is 109 to 105 with 45 seconds left on the clock and Kevin Durant sinks a shot to make it 109 to 107. The next 30 seconds, the Bucks could not score and ended up giving Kevin Durant the chance to tie the game or win it all. With five seconds left on the clock, Kevin Durant hits a fadeaway two, an inch away from being a three with his toe on the line. The Bucks are saved by KD's large shoe and they go into overtime with another chance to advance in this series. The overtime starts and the Bucks are the only team making shots and playing good defense in this overtime. Both teams gassed and the Bucks are able to push that final inch to knock out KD and the Brooklyn Nets. 
behind Giannis's 40-point Game 7 performance. Despite KD's heroics, it was not enough in the face of Giannis's domination for the Bucks, where after Game 2, he averaged 34 points and 13 rebounds on 56% from the field, pushing the Bucks to the Eastern Conference Finals for the second time in his career. Bucks now face the Trey Young-led Hawks. Going into Game 1, the Bucks were at home looking to start off strong with a 1-0 series lead, but unfortunately for them, Trey Young had other plans. Trey Young explodes for 48 points to outclass the Bucks 116-113, leaving Giannis Giannis's and Drew Holiday's big games in the dust, stealing Game 1. Going into Game 2, the Bucks needed to bounce back, and they did so. The Bucks blow out the Hawks 125-91, dominating the game and offensively and defensively, with Giannis leading the way with 25-9. Now, we are tied 1-1 going into Atlanta. It's time for the Bucks to take over the series and move forward to the finals. Things were looking to go as planned, with the Bucks winning Game 3 with a scoreline of 113-102, despite Trey Young's 35 points. But unfortunately, he sustained an injury in the game, causing him to miss Game 4. It looked like the the Bucks were poised to take a 3-1 lead versus the Hawks, but unfortunately tragedy struck for Giannis. Giannis sustains what looks to be a serious knee injury and is taken out of the game. The Bucks are blown out by the Hawks and the series is now tied 2-2. Now the Bucks are without Giannis for the rest of the series and they need to clutch up this series. Game 5 resulted in a huge game from the supporting cast with Brooke Lopez dropping 33 points and Bobby Portis dropping 22. This helped the Bucks take a 3-2 lead. Game 6 is in Atlanta and the Hawks had Trae Young coming back early from his foot injury that had him sidelined. The odds were stacked in the favor of the Hawks despite the Bucks leading the series so they decided to shock the world in Atlanta. Chris Middleton drops 32 points on the Hawks with Drew Holiday having 27, giving them the offensive power to surpass the Atlanta Hawks and make it to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1974, which is 47 years without entering the finals in 50 years without a championship. Before game one of the finals, it was announced that Giannis was going to play. After almost blowing up his knee a week prior, he was able to play in game one of the finals. Game one started with an overall dominant game from the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul led the way with 32 points, with Devin Booker following behind with 27 and eight and dominated the boards with 19. While Giannis had a 20 point, 17 point rebound game, it was clear that he wasn't the same and the Bucks weren't that good. We go to game two and Phoenix once again comes out strong. Their role players are all dominating at home with their entire arena rocking. The Bucks as a team were not playing well, but Giannis put on a clinic. He had 42 points and 12 rebounds for the game. He dragged his team into a close game, but the Suns were too much. The game finished 118-108, and the Suns had a 2-0 lead in the NBA Finals. Chris Paul was two games away from his first ring, something the entire world and media wanted for him, but the Bucks weren't dead yet. The games are now back in Milwaukee. This was the time for Giannis and the Bucks to make history and disprove all of their doubters. Game 3 starts off with Phoenix winning the first quarter up 28-25 into the second quarter the Bucks are down at home already even if it's just three points. Being down at home is never good, especially in the finals. The second quarter is dominated by the Bucks. They show why they are one of the best teams in basketball so with a great defense and the offense led by Giannis's 11 points. The Suns were outscored 35 to 17 in the quarter and the Bucks had a 15 point lead going into the half. The Bucks finally showed that they had life in this series and it was continued with the dominant third quarter by Giannis where he had 16 points shooting 80% from the field in the quarter. Even though the Suns had a better second half, it wasn't enough to overcome their shortcomings in the second quarter, and the Bucks pulled away. Giannis finished with 41 points and 13 rebounds, the second player in NBA history to have a 40.10 rebound game in back-to-back -back games. It was a stellar performance from everyone on the team, especially Giannis, leading them to a 2-1 series. Game 4 was here, and there were questions about the Bucks and Giannis, whether he could keep up his high-level performances, especially since he just came off an injury, and whether or not Chris Middleton would show up in the finals. This game could be the turning point for the Bucks. It decided whether or not it would be a 2-2 series or 3-1 for the Suns. This game would be a battle, a close game that went down to the wire. The first half was led by Devin Booker's 20 points and Chris Middleton's 16. It was clear we had a scoring battle brewing in this game. Skipping ahead to the fourth quarter, there was two minutes and nine seconds left, and the score is 99 to 99. It was going to be decided by the superstars on either team of who was going to pull through. The Bucks go down the court 30 seconds later and get a screen from Middleton, who hits a mid-range jumper, giving them the lead of 101 to 99. The Suns come down, setting up Devin Booker to get the ball from eight where he drives and throws up a lob to Aiden to tie the game, but instead, Giannis turns around and blocks DeAndre Aiden. This athletic, insane block that only Giannis could even do was a game saver. He stopped the momentum the Suns would have gained from that attack, one of the best blocks in NBA history to keep the Bucks ahead in this fatal game. The very next possession for the Suns, Drew Holiday pickpockets Chris Paul and they go down the court setting up Middleton for the fast break lay-in, giving the Bucks a four-point lead with 30 seconds left. The Bucks able to finish off the Suns in this one where Middleton finished with 40, Giannis Giannis gave us one of the best blocks in NBA history and Drew Holiday with a clutch deal to seal the game for the Bucks. All three stars showed up and showed out 
on both ends of the floor to push the series to 2-2. Game 5 offensively was dominated by all three Bucks stars. The first half was all Drew Holiday who led the way with 18 points on great efficiency while playing elite defense on Chris Paul. But the main drama of this Game 5 occurred very late into the game when it got tight. With two minutes left in this game, the Bucks have an 8 point lead at 120-112. Unfortunately for them, the next 1 minute and 30 seconds were all Suns. They scored 7 straight points, leaving the Bucks in a drought where it seemed like it would be the Suns game to come back and win. The whole attack was led by the likes of Devin Booker who finished with 42 points. The man who was on fire had the ball with 30 seconds left and a scoreline of 120 to 119. It was Booker's time to put the world on notice and give his team the lead. One point. Booker the drive, gets inside, leans in, knocked away and stolen by Holiday. Phoenix has to foul, and a pinnacle foul throws it down. And a foul. Unfortunately for Booker, Drew Holiday grabs the ball from him and runs down the court, setting up Giannis for a huge lob over Chris Paul. A game-deciding steal and dunk to lead the Bucks to a huge victory again, making it the third in a row. The Bucks are now one game away from winning the NBA Finals. Game 6 of the NBA Finals was upon us. The Bucks were at home and it was time to bring the city of Milwaukee their first championship in 50 years. We start off in the first quarter where the Bucks take a commanding 29-16 lead behind Giannis's 11 points. The team was looking poised to take this chip with a blowout in the final game, but the Suns had a different idea. The Suns outscored the Bucks 31-13 in the second quarter, giving them a 47-42 lead going into the half. Hope was restored for the Phoenix fans, but Giannis wasn't willing to give them hope for a Game 7, and he showed that in the third quarter. Giannis comes on the court blazing, leading the way for his team while eliminating the Suns' lead with his 20-point quarter. It all comes down to the fourth quarter to decide whether we go to 7 or Giannis will win his first NBA championship. With less than a minute left on the clock, we have a 96 to 100 score line and the ball is in Chris Middleton's hands. He comes off a screen off Giannis and bang, hits the mid-range jumper to give the Bucks a six point cushion versus the Suns. The Suns inability to reply leads the Bucks to scoring once again to make the lead 104 to 96. At this point, the game is over and the entire city of Milwaukee is celebrating. The game has ended upon two Giannis free throws where he gets to 50 points while shooting 17 of 19 from the line. Giannis went from a liability at the line to shooting 89% when it mattered most. As the clock dwindles, the Bucks are cemented in NBA history as the champions of the 2020-2021 NBA season. Giannis is finally an NBA champion. All of his hard work was paid off and he's done it for the city. He stayed loyal and won an NBA championship for the team that was doubted from day one. He was called a choker and that he couldn't win a championship as the number one option. Well, here he is at the top of the mountain holding his trophy. Giannis ended up winning the finals MVP, averaging 35 points, 13 rebounds, and five assists a game. One of the best playoff runs and finals performances in NBA history. Giannis has been cemented as one of the greatest players of all time at the age of 26. This video was really fun to make about the story of Giannis and how he got to where he is today. He is a great inspiration and one of the my favorite players in the league. It would be appreciated if you liked the video, left a comment, and shared the video to others, and make sure you subscribe. Peace out.